you know what all this trash is from, then you know it's already been a bit of an interesting day. Well, I am back home after three days in the hospital for relentless recurring idiopathic anaphylaxis, meaning we don't know what my triggers are, the reactions just happen at random. And I feel that I was prematurely discharged. I'm not the only one who feels that way either. So basically what happens is my reactions at baseline are handled at home with doses of IV Benadryl through my port, but then I get into these flares that are very severe and the IV Benadryl does nothing. My attacks happen in clusters, I require lots of epinephrine and other medical intervention. Usually what happens when I get hospitalized is I go to the progressive care unit for high risk patients like me, I get the same doctors, and I have a protocol where I must be 24 hours epinephrine free and at least be somewhat close to my baseline before I'm safe enough to go home. This time it didn't happen. I got like four doctors who I don't even, who doesn't, who know nothing about me and I've never had before. I went all over the place before ending up in an oncology unit because the hospital was so overcrowded and I didn't get discharged via my protocol. I definitely have not gone back to baseline and I definitely was not 24 hours epinephrine free. Within those three days, I used five doses of epi. I had two rapid responses called on me, almost intubated once, almost aspirated once, which is where you swallow your vomit down into your lungs, very dangerous. My blood levels were all out of whack due to how much epi I needed, the reactions themselves, and my oxygen levels fluctuating, and my potassium levels dropped, which isn't good because potassium helps regulate heart rhythm. So obviously I was a mess and not stable to go home. And the whole four doctors thing was like crazy because some of them said they felt I should stay and some said I, they felt I should go and it just happened that the doctor who saw me last said I should go. He told me there's nothing else we can do for you here and I said, I know I don't want answers to my complex medical case, I know y'all can't do that for me, that's why I'm being referred out to these specialists, but y'all need to keep me alive through this flare in the hospital until I reach baseline and I'm safe to go home. But he sent me home anyways. I know I could have advocated for myself better in Jun 2 if we weren't so freaking exhausted, but he sent us home, told us to come back if we need to use epi, and Jun and I are so thankful I made it through the night at home without needing epinephrine or Benadryl. It's crazy I didn't have a reaction. I think God was really watching over us and allowed us to get a really good night's sleep. But then this morning, I started having a little bit of a reaction and it progressed so slowly. I was actually on the phone with Judd when I started to not feel well and he told me to give myself the Benadryl, and sure enough, it was a reaction. It's the first time I gave myself IV Benadryl, because even at baseline, I'm like really overwhelmed and I can't breathe, so I've never been able to do it, because it's not just pushing Benadryl, there's a whole lot to it and keeping it clean and sterile. But I did it this time, although it's not that impressive, because it wasn't very chaotic, and it, the reaction was very slow. Then I refilled my emergency kit, I like to make sure it's stocked up. The problem is now though, anything before 2 p.m. a reaction, I have to use epi, call an ambulance and go to the hospital because one, Judd isn't here. He's at the law enforcement academy. He can't miss any more time, honestly, or they're gonna make him repeat and his graduation is less than two weeks away, so that's not happening. Two, I can't use any more Benadryl within a six hour period and my reactions don't just start for fun, you know, and then go away. They will keep progressing until it's really dangerous. So just doing my best and hanging in there. I'm feeling overwhelmed and scared. I would feel much more safe and comfortable in the hospital, um, but it is what it is. I know God is watching over me, so I just gotta hang in there. Okay, let's see some cute hippo to cheer us up. Harlow, get back, get back, get back. Happy dog, get back. Okay. Yay, Harlow. So I'm making it around the house carefully with my walker and one of my friends, Julian, so awesome, canceled his plans for today so he can come and be with me here in case I go into a reaction and have to go to the ER. That way I don't have to go by myself or in an ambulance or anything like that. So really thankful that God put good friends in my life and I know that's gonna make Judd feel better too so I'm not here alone. I have hippo, but <clears throat> she can't really administer an EpiPen, can she? So I thought I needed scissors for this, but apparently they can just slide right off. 
Ta-da! No more bracelets. Hopefully I don't need another one anytime soon. Harlow's happy because Julian's here. Hey. Thanks, buddy, for coming to stay with me so I'm not alone. You can take the camera. I'm going to show the peoples what we're doing. So I just got my hospital bag together. Just got some extra clothes, a few toiletries, my medication list, medical conditions list, and wallet in there. And of course, mm. Ellie the elephant is going in here too. Our hospital go bag, because when you use an epi, you got to go quick. And this is my emergency kit with IV Benadryl, my spacer and inhaler, which I just carry on me at all times. But remember, I can't use this until 2 p.m. And right now it's like, what, noon 30? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're getting everything ready in case I have a reaction and have to go to the hospital. Because if a reaction starts, I'm pretty much going to need epi if I can't use the IV Benadryl. I'm going to try liquid Benadryl if I start one before 2 p.m. I don't think it's going to work because it's never worked in the past, but worth a shot. And Julian's actually... We discussed it. Um, he's lived here locally a lot longer than I have. You actually grew up here, right? Yes. Okay. And he said that there's another hospital that's not too far away that is not overcrowded, and he had a really good experience there. I've had good experiences at my hospital, except for this trip, this past trip. They're just so crowded, so we're going to actually try the new hospital if I have to go. All an if. Knock on wood or I'll knock on a Harlow. <laughs> so, fingers crossed for no reactions. We can do this. Yes. Wait. Okay, good girl. Look at that self control. <laughs> Harlow, what'd you do? Sock off. <laughs> Julian, he loves your socks. <laughs> okay, Harlow, now give him back his sock. Have it? Give it back, Har. Harlow, Harlow, give. Good girl. Thank she you. loves them too much. <laughs> so, as we kind of expected, I ended up back in the emergency room because I had to use my EpiPen. Had the reaction before 2 p.m., so I couldn't use IV Benadryl. I tried the liquid Benadryl, but it didn't work. And Julian said I actually started going blue from lack of oxygen, and I could definitely feel that. So, EpiPen in the hospital here. They gave me a steroid shot and another H1 blocker to stop the itching, not Benadryl. Both intramuscular shots. Not sure if they're going to admit me. We'll discuss it with the doctor and see what's best. And Judd is on his way here to trade spots with Julian. But Julian, thank you for being such an awesome friend. He had a gut feeling he needed to cancel mm -hmm. his plans to come be with me today. And he was right. Yep. We were. So now we're just waiting for Judd and the doctor. Well, Chad made it. We've been here a few hours, and after getting sick again, and then getting some Ivisofran and fluids, a steroid shot, and another allergy shot, I'm going home, y'all. Yay! Of course, if I need my epi again, I'm to come right back to be admitted right away, but fingers crossed. All right, thank you. All right, well, we are home now from the hospital. Are you putting your foot in the frame? Yes. <laughs> Don't, you weirdo. <laughs> We're home from the hospital. Harlow's happy about it. Uh, if you're wondering, we don't bring her with us because she's in training and I didn't think Julian would be able to handle her and me. Not that she misbehaves, it's just like an another thing to worry about. So anyways, we didn't go to my usual hospital because it was so overcrowded this past admission. We went to its smaller sister hospital, which is about 10 minutes further away. They had all of my records and everything my usual hospital has. It's just smaller. And I got seen right away. They gave me a steroid shot and another H1, an, an antihistamine shot right here in my butt. And it hurts so much. And this is also the leg where I gave myself the epi. So this whole side is sore. But that helped with the itching and the breathing difficulties. And my blood pressure came back up on its own after that, which was great. And um, I talked with the doctor. We had a long discussion about weighing the risk and benefits of admitting me or sending me home and I've never gotten the steroid shot before and he really believed that it would help push me to baseline get over this flare so we agreed it would be okay to go home but if I have Judd's making funny faces at me no no if I have another reaction that requires my epinephrine my EpiPen within 24 hours go straight back to the hospital to be admitted right away no questions asked um and then I started to feel really sick and puked a lot, which was gross, so they gave me Zofran and fluids, kept me for longer observation. We were there a really long time, right babe? Like, hmm. I was there like 
mm. an hour and a half, two hours before you got there, and we were there mm. for, I'd say like four or five hours, and we didn't wait in the waiting room at all. We were there getting treatment the whole time and observation, but that is that. The doctor knew a little bit about mast cell, and he said it seems like that's what it has to be, because this is all a little bit too crazy to just be idiopathic anaphylaxis, and he's on board with me seeing somebody at UF if there's anyone there, so that's it. I just... I'm exhausted and not feeling totally great, so is Judd, but, um, this is life with chronic illness. One minute you're laughing at your dog, taking off your friend's socks, and the next you're stuck in the ER, and life can be super hard, but I try and take it in stride as best I can, keep my faith in God, don't like the cabinet, you weirdo, um, and lean on my loved ones for support, including y'all, and of course that cute guy behind the camera. This is Not a that Benadryl. Cute. You are cute. <laughs> this is a liquid Benadryl I tried to take at the start of the reaction because I couldn't use my IV Benadryl since it was too early. Get some to Harlow so we don't have to deal with her. You want some? <laughs> this didn't do anything. Well, we are going to bed. Thank you for joining us on our adventure today, and I hope you learned something about chronic illness and disability.